Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video in this one, my friends, I'm gonna be testing a GeForce RTX 4060 in the first Descendant. This one is the MSI Ventus version of the card, we are running it with the latest NVIDIA drivers and I'm not manually overclocking it. You can see all of its specs right here in Tech Power Up's GPU-Z as usual, resizable bar is also enabled, and over on the left preparing it with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with half of its cores disabled, so it's basically the same as a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, and over on the memory tab we're using 30 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 megahertz RAM in dual channel. Let's get into it! Shall we? And here we are. Let's go over the settings first. I am starting at 1080p resolution and we're also going to test this one at 1440p and 4K by the end of this video. I'm using 90 FOV and the graphics settings are set to custom because I manually set it to the best graphics to performance ratio, you know? So the effect setting, the object setting and the shadow setting right here are the most intensive ones. The rest of the settings, I set them to high uh, and it looks really good like this and it also performs with about like 20 to 30 more FPS than just default high settings and ultra settings is a little bit more intensive than that. Now this area right here is where I've seen it drop the most in FPS and we're seeing around like 70 frames per second with all of these people here uh, it gets down into the 60s as you can see and this is basically the worst case scenario you know you're rendering a ton of stuff right here. It's interesting that the GPU usage is also not pegged at 99% utilization there and uh, I'm not sure I don't think it's a CPU bottleneck scenario because, you know, this 7800X 3D equivalent CPU. So, yeah, it can't be bottlenecking a freaking 4060, right? But uh, the fact is, over in this area where there are not as many people around, it actually goes up to 99% GPU utilization. So, uh, <laughs> could it be a CPU bottleneck? I don't know. Okay, finally, let's start counting our FPS. I'm in an area with some enemies around and stuff like that. I'm going to complete a few more missions here. And as you can see, it's less intensive than the previous area where we started. It's getting 90 to 100 frames per second. It looks pretty good. Like, you can tell a little bit of a difference between high and medium shadows here if you're looking at the shadows. But it's not really too big. It still renders shadows far away, as you can see. You might notice some shadow detail rendering in as you walk like that but you do gain like 10 to 15 frames per second by setting the shadows to medium instead of high so i i recommend you to do that okay it, it gets a way more stable experience and when you're fighting a lot of enemies it actually tends to drop by quite a bit into the 70s and even mid 60s so it's better to have that stable experience in my opinion at least it makes it more enjoyable to me now one thing that i really like about this game and i wasn't really expecting is that uh, it is a U UE5 title, guys. It looks pretty good, you know, although a bit soft to my taste, but you can adjust the sharpness a little bit. I have it set to like a three or four or something like that but the thing that i like the most is that you can actually disable ray tracing in this one it's not like those ue5 titles where ray tracing is mandatory for some reason in this one ray tracing comes disabled out of the box and that's how you should play the game of course because it's way less intensive this way see ue5 can be optimized it's running at 90 fps with decent looking settings and i've seen a couple of stutters here and there but overall the gameplay is actually smooth it's not a stuttery mess like other UE5 titles and that's the second thing that I really really like about this game It's that it does actually compile the shaders before you get into it So you don't get major stuttering issues Also, this game has DLSS and frame generation if you're interested in that I'll also check it out in a little bit um, But there's no need here at 1080p. It already looks really really good or plays really really well actually There we go Okay, another one down over there. Where should we go? Right there? Yes, okay. So I need I need to do something to this thing right here. As you can see, by the way, once those enemies explode, uh, they tend to drop our FPS by a little bit, I think. Yeah, at least it dropped to like 70 frames per second for a second there. All right, there we go. Good stuff. This is definitely the way to go, in my opinion, in this title. I've also visited a ton of websites. All of them said different things about the best optimized settings for this game. So I just decided to spend an hour yesterday and uh, find my custom settings for this specific GPU. So now we're outside. Should be a little bit more intensive. There we go. Come on, let me just... Oh, I was going... I was going to F that better. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Lots of them right here. Okay. 
Um, maybe I should try it at 1440p next, or maybe with some DLSS to see if we can get rid of some of that noise, because it's the double-edged sword here in this one. It's either too soft if you don't use sharpening, but if you do use sharpening, it becomes a little bit noisy around the character. Like over here, you can see it's like you're using some FSR 2, for example, although not as bad. All right, so if you want DLSS and frame generation and stuff like that, it's hidden here under the additional options. I'm going to set it to NVIDIA because we got an NVIDIA GPU. I'm going to set it to DLAA to see if it looks a little bit better. And indeed, it does. Actually, yeah, that gets rid of the little noise that we were seeing over here there is no more ghosting maybe very minimal ghosting and there is definitely no more noise so if you have an nvidia gpu definitely utilize the laa as you can see it gets pretty much the same fps so you're not losing fps by using that like in other titles for example cyberpunk loses a ton of fps if you use the laa but other games only see like a minor disadvantage in fps minor drop basically uh, uh, yeah, 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 and most games actually stay pretty much the same, like one or two FPS lower with the LAA. So you already know what to expect with the LAA, better visuals. I didn't notice that it actually had the LAA because I only played with DLSS yesterday. <laughs> uh, but yeah, use this, guys. It works even better, and now it does look really, really nice for a, a native resolution image. It's not noisy, and it's not soft or too soft at the same time. Uh, oof, so many of them. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're zombies, actually, but... Oh, boy. Oh, soulless. So many of them soulless people. I'm going to stop it there, guys, for a DLAA, since it's pretty much the same thing as what we've seen. And I'm going to set it to quality DLSS next. And, uh, interesting. So, quality DLSS, I can see a little bit of ghosting. Kind of the same, maybe even more emphasized than net native resolution without the LAA. Uh, but there is no noise, okay? It's just little ghosting here and there. And now we're getting 100 plus FPS. So if you are after that higher refresh rate experience and you don't mind a bit lower visual fidelity from your game, you can actually have it here, guys. Now, in a game like this, this this is a shooter game, right? It might not be super competitive and stuff like that, obviously. But I enabled frame generation. I played with it for a little bit yesterday. I will still enable it here in this video, of course. But I really don't recommend it. You can actually notice the input lag reduction or uh, addition, actually. <laughs> uh, it's more input lag, right? And uh, it becomes a little bit weird, you know? It actually does affect your aim. I prefer to have like 70 to 80 FPS native than 120 FPS with frame generation enabled in a game where you actually need to shoot some things. Also, I haven't seen a stutter in a really long time, actually. Really, really smooth experience right here. So that's great. And the VRAM, I can't really see the utilization, the actual usage in this one, unfortunately. Come on, there we go. Um, but the allocation is really low. Unfortunately, though, I can't use ultra textures with 8 gigabyte GPUs because it seems to go over 8 gigabytes um, by a little bit. At least I've seen it swap into the RAM and the RAM went to like 15 gigabytes of usage. So yeah, it was stuttering a bit more while doing that as well. Anyway, that's it for DLSS quality, I guess. I've run around for a little bit. It stays really, really stably above like 90 frames per second all of the time. But again, I think I would prefer the LAA because it looks better and you still get really, really stable FPS. So I'm going to use the LAA again, plus frame generation. All right. And now we get 120s. But once again, the trade-off is that input lag and also a little bit of a softer image, actually. Doesn't look as good as the LAA, definitely. Um, let's go. <laughs> Mission complete already? Seriously? Guys, like, these missions are super small. <laughs> uh, I'd like to have bigger missions, please. Oh, boy. Anyway. <laughs> as you can see, it kind of gets slightly higher FPS than uh, the LSS quality here. But not by too much. And the LSS quality gets you real FPS, not frame-generated FPS with input lag. So, yeah, 
Although this is very, very smooth, obviously, as it should be. I wouldn't really do this because, well, of the input lag. Again, like that input lag is, is noticeable. It's not bad or anything. You can get used to it in 10 seconds, <laughs> you know. But it affects my aim a little bit. I played for about 10 minutes yesterday with frame generation enabled and I was hitting less shots and stuff. So there's that, guys. I, I wouldn't really do this. Let's go down. Kill all of them. Here we go. Good stuff. What level am I, actually? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there he is. Okay. So that was it for, for the mission. <laughs> that, seriously? <laughs> that's a really small mission, dude. What the hell? <laughs> so that's it for 1080p resolution. I'm going to disable frame generation there. I'm going to keep the same settings and the LAA. And we're going to go up to 1440p. All right, here we go. 2560 by 1440 is now the resolution. Still using the same settings as we left it. And as you can see, using these settings, it actually gets close to 60 frames per second, which isn't bad. Although most of the time it will be between 50 and 60 frames. It's, it's all right, guys. There we go. Come on, let's kill this bastard. But it's not what I'd want coming from this game, you know? So we need to, to utilize some tricks uh, to make it a little bit smoother and a little bit more snappy feeling and uh, playable feeling or just smoother overall, right? <laughs> uh, it's, it's definitely playable like this. It doesn't really stutter too much or anything. And it's kind of a little bit impressive that the 4060 can do this in a ue5 title you know at 1440p resolution remember we've seen tons of games this year uh, gray zone warfare comes to mind <laughs> that are so broken and are so intensive especially because of the use of nanite and lumen by default without the the ability to disable them that they run like this with these kinds of fps with an RTX 4070. <laughs> now, the thing is, you could lower things down to medium, like everything to medium, and achieve like three to five more FPS. That would put our averages at 60 plus at 1440p res. Oh boy, okay, just, I want to go up there. There we go, thank you. Here at 1440p, instead of dropping the settings down to flat out medium, you know, to achieve 60 plus on average, and it would still drop a little bit, I would just utilize DLSS quality because DLSS quality in this game does look good, as I told you, and at higher resolutions, it looks even better than 1080p, of course. That's how the upscalers work. The higher the resolution, the better it will look. And as you can see, now we're above 60 frames per second, at least most of the time here at 1440p resolution with close to 1440p visuals for sure. Like this is... This is looking better than 1080p with the LAA, right? I'm gonna fight all of those down there once again. Check out the FPS, if it drops or not. And a little stutter there. I think the little stutters happen whenever these uh, spaceships show up, as you saw. Like, maybe it's loading them. I don't know. Come on. Come on. See. Let's do something over here. Yeah, some effects, as you can see. V. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> that was a nice fight. Really quick one. Come on. Little barrier right there. Not for anything because they actually push you, but okay. <laughs> and V again. There we go. See, no problems whatsoever handling it at 60 plus FPS using these settings at 1440. Pretty impressive once again. Unreal Engine 5. I, I thought, yeah, this game is going to be another broken game. And after seeing so many people asking me to, to review it, uh, the performance aspect of it, of course, um, I thought, yeah, there's no way this is well optimized. They didn't mention anything about performance, so thanks for not spoiling anything to me. <laughs> I was really impressed with it. But usually when people ask me tons of times to check out the game's performance, it's because it's completely broken, and a lot of them want me to, to just crap on it, you know? <laughs> and I do, a lot of times, like in Grey Zone and stuff like that. But not today, my friends. I am really impressed. Now, you could use frame generation on top of DLAA here at 1440p, I really don't recommend it because now we're below 100 FPS and the input lag is even worse at the moment. 
it's like you're getting input lag of 40 frames per second. So yeah, it looks smooth, but it doesn't feel that great. All right, so don't do that. But maybe with quality DLSS and frame generation on top of it, it might be a, a decent experience. Yeah, not really. It gets like, what, 10, 15, maybe 20 FPS maximum higher than without frame generation. And now you got that input lag disadvantage. So I would not really use that, guys. Fortunately, it seems that the VRAM is still enough, guys. On a UE5 title, the VRAM is still enough, apparently, to use frame generation at 1440p with this card. This is kind of unheard of, <laughs> unless it's an older title which supports FG, like um, Cyberpunk, for example. Even Cyberpunk runs out of VRAM if you use ray tracing and so on. All right, well, let's start another mission right here. It's only three missions, apparently, in this map, which is weird. Uh, but I, I want to kill some enemies right here. There we go. Those were just chilling there. This is also the first level in the game, guys. Maybe it's not as intensive as other levels or parts of the map, basically. But I mean, it's what I have access to at the moment. And it, it looks pretty good, right? It, it looks detailed and stuff. So, yeah, I, I thought I'd, I'd do it right here. I mean, yeah, you can definitely get used to the input lag here at 100 FPS. Previously at 80 FPS without the LSS quality, it was a bit rough, but it looks pretty decent with FG and the LSS quality, not gonna lie. I, I could definitely enjoy the game like this, and I can still enjoy the visuals like this. It's a little bit softer than it was previously, but honestly, it's not really that big of a deal since we are at 1440p resolution. It is going to be a, a very, very decent and all right experience. Gonna stop it right there, and let's do... 4K. <laughs> and this is where the RTX 4060 finally starts struggling quite a lot. Okay, so I disabled frame generation, I disabled DLSS, we're at DLAA, and uh, yeah, it gets 30 ish FPS, which is not terrible considering that UE5 title once again. But you don't want to play this at 30 FPS. It really feels sluggish, guys. <laughs> right? Ugh. I'm going to start counting the FPS as well. I'm going to go in this direction and try to make it drop from 30 frames per second. Because I think in very intensive scenarios, it will drop from 30 FPS. Hi. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's already dropping over here. Yeah, nice. Good, good effects right here. I like it. Oh, boy. Come on, uh, I'm gonna put like a barrier down. <laughs> I don't know why you would use barriers against these guys with the claws, but it's uh, it's all right. You know what? Surprisingly, the the aiming still feels snappy, guys. Like moving the camera around is instant. In other games, there is huge input lag. Maybe it's because Nvidia Reflex is enabled here, actually. Although in terms of choppiness, it's just terrible, right? Also, just a quick comparison between the LAA on and off. Here it is on, it's getting 35 frames per second. And here it is off, it's getting 37 frames per second. So a small decrease there, definitely worth enabling the LAA at lower resolutions though. Even at 4K actually, because I can still see a little bit of noise without the LAA, and the LAA fixes that. Yeah, okay. But let's enable quality DLSS here. We went from 35 FPS to 53. It still looks really good because it's 4K resolution. It's now playable. It doesn't really drop from 30 FPS anymore, which is nice, but still not 60 FPS. So I'm going to try to aim for those 60 FPS before I go kill more uh, enemies here. Let's see balanced. Uh, okay, it can get 60, but remember, this is not really that intensive of a scenario. It was getting 35 at native, and down there, with all of the enemies, we saw 25 FPS at times. So it will definitely still drop into the 40s and possibly high 30s on balanced DLSS. Let's see, performance though. Performance might be able to achieve 60 plus most of the time. At least that's what I thought it would do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because performance is rendering the game at 1080p resolution and upscaling it to 4K. And it does look way better than 1080p. 
at least on my 32 inch monitor it does but at the same time it's still way more intensive than just 1080p native resolution you know although it is rendering the game at that res the upscaling part seems to be way way more intensive to the 4k res over here there we go there we go another one down so if, I've, I've already seen it drop into the 50s by the way to 58 or so it's going to be very hard for you to achieve a 60 plus fps experience at the uh, 4k resolution with a 40 60 guys maybe the way to go is to play on low settings with performance dlss maybe with like high textures and this way it might look decent yeah it still looks pretty decent actually and it gets us uh, those 60 plus fps all of the time 90 fps right here means that even in worst case scenario it will drop to like the 70s so kind of like what we saw at 1080p resolution uh, with the optimized settings you could say not too bad actually it's still with performance dlss though but it doesn't look bad at all like it's it's not even noisy with performance dlss really impressive this technology you know what guys i think it's time for us to move on out of this area and go to that initial part of the game you know where you actually choose your missions choose your world and stuff like that and here we are with all of the peoples <laughs> getting 70 ish frames per second doesn't really matter what kind of fps you get in this area you just run around there's no combat here so it's fine but uh, this is what we get 70 fps on the worst case scenario basically uh, at 4k low settings high textures dlss performance and it still looks really really close to the native 4k resolution still it's playable even if you have a 4k monitor although not at native 4k of course if i try it at native 4k it's probably going to be very bad yep okay so 50s <laughs> even on low settings see and if i go to this area it's already dropping into the 40s seeing all of the players right here we get 30s <laughs> So keep the LSS enabled at 4K resolution, at 1440p as well. I recommend the LSS quality and um, no frame generation, once again, with the optimized settings. And at 1080p, you can run native resolution just fine with the LAA, and that's what I would recommend as well. But if you want that higher refresh rate experience, quality DLSS still doesn't look too bad. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always... Love you all. Bye-bye.